So title is first the what I learned from from, from Ruben's backhold wrestling class. Yeah? Now it's not going to be a wrestling class. It's just what I learned from, from that. And we can take this class two ways. I can actually and probably going to do like both a little bit. I can show you guys what I what I uh, learned from the, in the actual position how to game that system. I'm going to go a little bit to that. And I'm going to go into the part how I like the concept to uh, apply to my own to, to the to, to everything. Yeah. Um, so all of these things is look. If you want to improve faster in jiu-jitsu, yes. So one of the things you should do is always focus on patterns. If you define jiu-jitsu, it's just about about um, in the amount, just all the techniques. Okay, scissor sweep, arm bar, knee bar. There is unlimited amount of techniques. It never ends. Yes. But if you focus on the patterns, it always recurs. And you see, it's actually always a bit, a little bit uh, the same. Now, what is so? What is the com what is the complex part of jiu-jitsu? I say this every class these days. Look. The pattern that always recurs in every sport is you do it with your body, right? With the human body. And the least complex body part you have is your spine, and also the most important. You can chop off your arms, as long as your head and spine is there, you have some, somewhat of a life stuff, yeah? <laughs> yeah, what can your, can your body do? You can, you can, ex, you can, uh, you can be neutral. You can make a, a hollow, a hollow a, how do you call this? A round back. You can make a hollow back. You can hinge back and forth. You can do this motion, like a lateral crunch, and you can rotate. Yes? And what is very complicated is your grips. If you define any position in Jiu-Jitsu, it's always defined by the way the two bodies connect. Yes? Okay. So, as a beginner, what I, what I see often with beginners, that they start to fight, and you know what I say with a spazzy white belt, what they say? Well, it's like, pa, 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 pa. that's one way of spazziness, but it's also undecidedness. What is undecidedness? I'm going to grip here, I'm going to grip there, I'm going to grip there, I'm going to grip there. I'm going to grip there. It's not a conversation with, with a role. Huh? Why is my choke not working? Well, because you're not choking. Yeah, and that goes to something else. Maybe insist. Like, not a single thing works if you don't insist on it. Yes? Okay, good. So I, I believe, truly believe, there is no bad position in Jiu-Jitsu. There is only position in Jiu-Jitsu where you know what to do or where you don't know what to do. And you're either few mistakes away from losing or you're Less mistakes away from losing, and more and more mistakes from opponent away from, from uh, less mistakes away from winning. Either close to the victory or, cl or close to the defeat. But otherwise, than that, if you play the game, even if you have like a, like this amount of arm left still, or this amount of space to breathe, you can still completely come back from that. Understand that? So the backhold pressing. Then anyone, anyone ever did Ruben's class? Whoever did it? Okay. So basically, what, what is it? Uh, well, can I help you? Yeah. So it's very simple. I'm gonna play a little bit from there. <laughs> oh, hello, man. <laughs> so it's very simple. First things first. Open your hands. Close your thumbs. Put your hands on top of each other and close. Gable grip. Does everyone have it correct? Okay, good. Because very often you see people do this. It drives me nuts. So we have to go around and fix every single hand. So I I started using Rubenan's class as an introduction to Jitsu for everybody. I teach all of Southern Esquire in school, and I go straight there, and they have fun right away. So, I sit down for a second. So, one of the success stories I had recently, I was teaching self-defense to, uh, to a school, and the challenge was this. It was 40 kids. 20 of them were um, studying car metallurgy, so how to fix cars. So, mostly, mostly uh, like 90% boys, 10% girls. And the other one was, uh, how you call it, like, like a hair tailoring. Okay, 90% girls, 10% boys. Now try to teach a class that they that they both want to play. And on top of that, was during Corona, it was not allowed to go inside. And it was raining. You want to do it? Yes, please, I want to do it. So what did I do? We go on the grass. No, oh, we don't want to pull our feet out. We're going to put your shoes out. we are going to put them out. We can stand in the rain here, I don't care. We can, I was like in a t-shirt. We can stand here all day, I really don't care. Or we're gonna, okay, and then I got them to do it. And by the end, of, by the end of the, we have like one hour and a half outside, it took me 30 minutes to convince them. And by then, they were rolling in the mud and fighting the grass, just doing a back hold rest. The rules were very simple. And don't throw, just lift them up. Don't let go of your grips. See? And, and, uh, you can throw. But, then again, look what I always said. If you don't want to, first things first. A lot of injuries happen in, in, uh, in, in the, the takedowns if you fall on your hands. Yes, but if you decide to keep the hold here and stick to each other, and the weight is more or less the same, and you agree not to do <coughs> smash down, then the worst can happen is like <coughs> it's okay. 
but don't post your hands. So that's the rule. You keep, you keep it tight, yes? And then, okay, the rules are lift them up, maybe put a foot on the floor, and if you really do not want to fall, yeah, then treat it as standing up a circus ball. You don't have to follow your face to know you failed. So if you're here, like here we already know you failed. There's no reason to ah, boom, take, take very rough down. So can oh, sorry, no. So the grip is this actually. I'm going to go straight away to the face. Put the arm over and under, catch, heads together, and you start fighting from the grip. Rules are simple. Lift them up for three, four, five seconds, whatever you decide. You win, put one knee on the floor or the back on the floor, whatever, you win, or uh, lose the grip for the other guy, you also win. And if you don't want to fall rough, just be a little bit out of balance, and that's and that's fine. And the very first mistake a lot of you are going to make, fine, I can sit down, and this is the very first thing, like, okay, look at this, eh? you see the difference between what I'm doing right now and what I'm doing right now. Who saw the difference? Yeah, thank you. The first thing I do when I compete, always look, how is the guy standing? If I see this, easy match. Okay, easy match. And if you look in schools, eh? and this is... I don't know if it's 100% true, but I think so. These are the kids that get bullied. And these are the kids that not get bullied. Because you, well, it can be, it's more than that alone. But here you're certain of yourself. And here you get, you get bullied and, and pushed over. Anytime you see Rick's and Gracie teach a seminar, like I'm, I, I never saw it live. But any photo you see, like anytime he teach, like, teaches like at the class, every time I saw this, he always just like talking about, about that, feeling into the, like, don't, don't be walked over. And that's like the first thing, the like great distribution. So we're going to play a little bit now, get those grips. Then we're going to play a bit with the back hole thrusting itself, like 20 minutes. And I'm going to show else what I learned from that. <laughs> guys, time? Come here. So first thing I want to ask you guys, is this a good position? Is this a favorable position in a grappling match? Yes or no? Yeah, it depends on what. Depends on the rules. Okay, the, like in any rules whatsoever, you think it's a good hold? Well, it's as good as 50-50. You like 50-50? Yeah. Yeah. If you're good at 50-50, you like it. Uh, I don't like, in general, we talk 50-50 with the leg locks, eh? but I, in general, do not like 50-50 positions because it's 50-50. And if the guy specializes in it, it's, it's, it's worse. And if you fight stand-up with a big, strong guy, like it's already like, like it's already harder. And then you want to go in a 50-50 position with like a heavier person. You're usually going to lose if you try to throw the person. But what we actually have to do is try not to get thrown. That's what I usually teach kids in self-defense. Get close, eh? make a posture, don't be a pushover, stay there forever, and do not get thrown. How long does a fight last in reality? That's like uh, at three of my, my self-defense class tomorrow. One minute, One maybe minute. two minutes. Eh? And the main goal is this. Eh? In self-defense, don't lose. The main goal in martial art is win. Don't lose or win is, is, too is, is, not, is not the same. Eh? So look, can I help you? Can you help me please? Look. So how can we sheet this system? Look, if you play this game, as far as I understand it, if you're close here, there is a good side and a bad side. Usually people in, like, who, who, uh, who don't do martial arts, go to this side please, they believe that this is the strong side, from my perspective. Yes or not? No. Usually, the total beginners, whenever it's martial arts, they believe this is yeah. the strong side. Is it the strong side? No, no it's not. Uh, it wants to be there. And so what, why is it such a bad thing to do? Well, like, first of all, you want to throw him, I mean, this had to be forward. Yes, here, I can throw him. This is that. And even if I throw him, in judo will be great, I will get people. In reality, usually this happens. You throw the guy, he falls, spins you over. Ah, okay. I won't get into this. But, <laughs> but not, uh, not anything else. Yeah? Then secondly, if he stays, this is way low, and keep your butt close to me, and you put pressure on your head. No, it's not even that works. So this is like a perfect self-defense spot. You cannot punch him, you cannot throw him. Very good first step for, uh, for, for any martial arts, and you can wait it out. Now look, if he gets impatient and tries to throw me, put your hip in front of me, please. No, is it good? You're gonna put your left leg in front of me. Here, and I'm in the lead. Understood? Put your right. Uh, if you try to throw me backwards, I can also counter it. So anytime you bend, you put yourself uh, less favorable. So for me, to, to build the system here, I want to be this guy. I want to get my arms over his shoulder, over here, yeah? and then I want to be over here. If I want to fight a bigger guy, stand up, or a lighter guy, it doesn't matter. I always want to be here in the other. Every single time I'm going to put my leg forward, I'm going to get thrown backwards. 
I have been a long judo class. Well, the problem with, I, I did judo for many years. The problem with I with judo was always, not that judo is bad, just the way I was taught was not great. But always, this uki bushi, oh bushi, or sukagari, sukagari, million drills, now five. And then you think, it's always, and the problem is, when you start giving a name, you start to hunt for that specific thing. But in reality, like, it's like all those Japanese names eh, are probably just names like ah, outside hip throw, inside foot throw. You do the right throw when the, when the situation requires it. Yeah? So whenever I'm, so what I'm going for, I want to be here and go inside. Yes? Now, how can he prevent me from going there? Easily. He can lift his left elbow up, and I can, well, I will do the same on his side. So now, <laughs> try to, now I have the battle. Try to find the and the battle for finding that side. Yeah? Now, whenever he goes for it, he goes for it, that's when I actually can start to win. Whenever he rotates first, I, I win actually the, the, the take down. So play a little bit more with this information, and then continue with the next step. Uh, I got a good question from here, please. So, how do you get there? So, one of the things, you can you can get everywhere with everything that's been enough. Uh, okay. They always say, strength doesn't work. Well, if strength doesn't work, it means you're not using enough strength. Strength always works. Nobody beats a silver bag gorilla. I think, but, but it's not the end, it's not the end of it. So look what happens here. If I want to go underneath the feet tight, eh? one of the ways to keep the elbow tight, eh? what I can do is try to like, throw him away and go here. And it's definitely okay, but the problem is, here's where you get hip tossed. Boom. Is it bad to get hip tossed? Well, usually it's okay, because we play a gentleman game of rolling with, okay, but if I go with a judo group, <laughs> it's, not, it's not okay, it's not, it's not okay. And, I don't want to get tossed. See? So the best way for me to go there is to be like in his eagerness tries to toss me, go for it, and I sink. See? I want to be here. That's the very best spot. Okay. Now, it only works if he's silly and doesn't know anything about martial arts and he, and he, and he goes for it. See? I want to lower my base see? and keep tight. Now, the whole battle here is against this. He tried to put my head into the floor. That's his battle. See? Go back. See? And my battle is to put pressure against that. See? Put pressure. I cannot keep it, I can walk a little bit forward to connect our hips. So I'm actually doing this pressure here. My first throw, I always gonna go for is to keep this, see, and start walking in. <laughs> Got that? See? So keep tight, eh? So I'm gonna put pressure on my head, keep the grips around this hip, and I'm actually blocking this hip. I'm gonna start to pivot around. Yes? And this battle here is gonna put the pressure on the shoulder, the pressure on the shoulders, and put the button away from the shoulder. Right that way. That's his battle. And if I start to go here, again, I play this in matches. Eh? So it's, not, it's not really a problem, because you have to, if you know how to, how to shoot this game. But it's not the best thing to do. The best thing is always to stay here and be patient. So if you're tired as a lighter person to get thrown, stop trying to throw your opponent. Just be tired. Try to stay here forever, see? And until he overcommits. For example, try to toss me. We can see and go here. And the back hole present is apparently not allowed. But this is what I learned from it. So this is something, okay, so self-defense, stand up, as good as possible. This is what I teach you guys. You try, and you can be a little bit in the face. <laughs> possible, so that's it, okay? Well, and another thing to do it straight away. How do we get there against a better guy? You have to trick him a bit. So in the beginning, look, what I always try to teach is keep your butt backwards. I like teach this posture first. And I'm gonna go into, you know my system, the mirroring principle. Yeah. You always give the opponent what he wants and he's not want it anymore. You want your butt backwards? Keep your, keep your butt move backwards? I'm gonna try to keep it close. I go here, now you got my back and you can push me backwards. I gave him what I wanted. And then I lose. Put your butt backwards. Every time you stand up five and his butt is backwards, I'm gonna put my butt backwards. Now the hard part, keep your weight on your toes and start walking away. It's, this simulates a neck one. Not, not, not really an different, but the, the same mechanics. So first, so put your butt backwards, here, yeah, and you walk back in a straight line. Now, more often than not, we will notice that people, when they start walking backwards, okay, so I'm gonna walk backwards, keep that, okay? They start to do this, okay, foot sweep. That's when foot sweeps come. But I get us at a basic level. Walk it and push. Yeah. So I have to learn to keep my weight on my toes and start walking backwards like this. Okay, good. So now from here, what will he do? If he's tired of getting pulled backwards, see, he can mirror me, walk backwards also, and get like a tug of war, which is interesting. 
But if you're a less patient person, what else we start to do? You start to stand up. And then you go, I sink, push. When I push, how can it beat me here still? How can, what can it do not to fall? It can rotate. And then I'm exactly in the spot that I wanted, and I start to fight. It was bad. Got that so far? Play with that. Start with a tug of war. See what happens if you keep tugging. You increase pressure if you mirror. The guy is tired of the pressure, he stands up. Go for the back. Maybe it works. The guy rotates, you rotate that also. So you see it's always the same thing. Go away, we go away. We go in, we go in. He rotates, I rotate. He walks away. Because I don't want to fight. I walk backwards, walk backwards. Again, we don't fight. Do you ever use it in the gym? Yes. Because we ever do walk, like, like uh, what I hate, especially when, I, when, I, when new people come in and we greet, and they're in the surf and fight with me, and they go, go with me. And they run away. Eh? And you say, hey, don't run away. And what I do this is this. You run away from me? Okay, I go, eh. and just, what am I doing? Eh? Exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then I start to come back straight away. Fix it right away. The very first thing, it's a great about this, I think. It's a safe, quick way to introduce people to stand up. You don't spend an hour switching grips. So that's what I really like about this. You, you go both the sides on a fixed hold, yeah? and you get straight into the business. What is the main piece of Jiu Jitsu? It's not grips. Grips, of course. Grips is the, the first advanced thing you should learn. Well, you can see it both ways, because grips also prevent stuff. But I'm more interested in giving you the, the, the core motions, shoulder pressure, body, body uh, like uh, weight distribution, the rotation. So you actually find by putting pressure forward, putting pressure in the hip, by rotating the shoulder in. Every time you do this, you got to be very wary. So it's really out of balance in, in this case. Yeah? So you go straight into the action right away. It's safe. It's fun, at least for, for complete beginners who never, who, never, who never did it. And I enjoyed it really much. I, like, I learned a lot from it. And, and that's the main reason I do it. Now look, uh, next thing, and the last part of the, this, because there's also stuff on the other side you can do. For example, if you have here, and, and it puts the elbow high, you manage to get your elbow, let's say, you get, manage to get your elbow inside, then it's safe to go this side, for example. Okay? But it's, it's hard to get, and it's more tricky. Okay? Now what I do then from here, look, I, so I play the whole day, and in the middle, okay, put your butt backwards, I start to walk away, you start to stand up, or not, or they keep stalling him out forever, it's a bit straining, you start standing up, slide over, shoulder, start putting pressure. He rotates his hip, I rotate my hip. So I have to keep an upright posture. There is things to do from here. He's not interested in that today. I'm going to stay, stay over here. Now, whenever I start putting pressure backwards here, what I always try to do here is put the right leg behind me, and I put a bit of pressure forward. And that is all that I can throw here. Now, if I just think it's this, see, will just walk past me, and I get a chance to get hip tossed again. So what I want to do here is different. Look, one very important thing in stand-up is don't spread yourself too thin, and don't be like a, I call this in the circus. Yeah, or don't be a mermaid, because you only have one leg, see? It's too far, see? And it's a it takes a time before you get back, you know? But you have to be, you'll be here, and if you start leaning with your front leg, you get spread too thin, and they can pull you away. What you gotta do is bring your foot close first, and then step this one in. Yeah? And you want to try to keep your weight for the next stroke on your front leg. So if you close it. So we got here, I managed to get this to my side, bring it backwards this butt, instead of stepping backwards, the right, I connect my hip. And in this case, look, this rotation is going this way. And I want to use that, I want to put, I want to toss him over this leg. So I want to be able to, to, to stop him from getting this leg out and make him unable to step this leg. So what I do is I keep the hip tight, I step close, I'm putting weight in that foot. Now I start rotating him over here. Feel things? Feel it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it works best the moment it goes to the step. So you're here, go for it, put pressure, it steps pressure backwards, and I start, no, no, don't fall, don't fall. Keep your weight forward, don't fall. So I'm here, I keep blocking with my hip, right leg, left leg, see, put the rotate him over his foot. And the best throws, they don't make any noise, see, and they go very slow. Why is that? Because if I keep him tight and go close to him, I can go into my passing game straight away. If I toss him too hard, I give momentum that he can use to toss me over. Understand? And it's, it's safer, more follows up into a, into a, like, like into a different game, 
And also, well, safer in a way, like, if you go very hard, I cannot see the, like, in IBJF even, they forbade the trolls with head outside because of the amount of uh, beginners who fell on their face and hurt their necks. Okay? So, and if you go slowly like that, it's safe for everybody, uh, provided you don't do it too, too rough. You don't fall on your face, and, and it's more applicable because you're right away into the, into the, into the bar passing. Okay? So play with a little bit more resistance. Good pressure, he steps backward, step in, keep going close, and try to roll the person over the front foot. How will you get good in this? You practice and putting time into it. I can keep whining, whining, whining. You have to fight, find how is the name for it? The wrist sticks, maybe? You have to fight, find the machine code. So, what I found now is for me the most beneficial path to victory without like staying to the root of Jiu Jitsu, minimal effort, maximum efficiency. Yes? But if you stay to the root of Jiu Jitsu, is this. Jiu Jitsu is actually, for me, is a counter sport. Yes? If you do not want to fight me, you don't have a problem, and I don't want to fight you. Yeah? And, okay, and often, because we compete, we have to fight. Okay, we have to win, we have to win, we have to win. And that is cool, because why we have to do that? Because if you both say, ah, let's not fight, then we can actually not really train. So we have to have that fight. Yeah? But if you find yourself to lose too much in training, getting injured too much, getting tired too much, and stop trying to win for just a while, and try not to lose, not to the extent that you're going to, well, because there is much valid what, what British doing, for example, in, in exploring the, the outer limits of what is possible in, in full defense. Eh? It is good that, that some people explore the full reach of that and that you make that a part of your game. But also you can see, like, survival and... Look, if I'm... Okay, what is survival? Well, I can say... In, in, I can describe the word survival. It's trying to maintain the status quo. Yes? If I'm being attacked in a choke near and getting choked, I'm trying to survive first, trying to not make it worse. But if I'm attacking you in an arm bar, and you're in a straight arm bar, you're trying to get out, I'm also surviving. But I'm just trying to keep, to make it not worse, yes? Okay, what is defense? Defense is going, oh, for many people, defense is about escape, from the getaway. If you get away, you go from a, at best, from a negative position to a, at best, neutral position. But in fact, not always, because if I'm fighting a kickboxer, and I'm being arm barred by a kickboxer, and I'm battered on the floor, and I get my arm out, the guy stands back up, so we go from neutral to the place he wants to be. Same with a wrestler. Yeah. So, I never want to escape, as the first thing. It's good to be able to escape later in the, in the line, but I don't always want to escape. I want to stay in the fold, and try to slow and step by step increase my position and get, and get it better. Yes? Now, when I'm attacking, what am I doing? I'm trying to step by step increase my position and get better. So the difference between offense and defense? What is the difference? There is no difference. The first difference is defense, you're closer to dying, eh? and offense, you're closer to winning. But in fact, it's always from position to have to get slowly and step by step better. Yes? But I always talk about offensive defense. Always try to maintain your spot. Don't try to rush and let a bit between your partner come. Like most problems in YouTube against most people in the world will solve itself. They will solve itself. Is he spazzing and going? Just wait. The spazziness will go out. You keep your grip. The guy does not progress. He's not patient. He will get out. Leading by points. Put some pressure. Wait. He will let go. The problem starts when the guy is also patient and is not put under pressure. But he's mentally equally strong as you. Ah, that's where the fun begins. And they have to play the chess game. But it's like that. that and then you start adding different things. We use pressure points in fighting. We use, we use pressure points. And we're using pressure points. With my worst enemies and my best friends, I do put my chin in people's ribs. Why not? Is it, is it dangerous to do that? No. Do you do the white belt? No, because they already are spazzy by themselves. If the person is too patient of moving, okay, so you are stalling me out by defending, and I can make you more uncomfortable. How can I make you more uncomfortable? Can sometimes be putting my gear over your face. CO2 builds, get anxious, you fight, especially on training. In competition, well, also, <laughs> well, why not? Put your chin in your ribs, try to like, put a bit of pressure. Don't make it nasty, don't put it in your eyes. Eh? But gentle, constant pressure, not rough, it's okay to do that. As long as it's not dangerous, do it. Don't do things you don't like what people do to you. I don't mind getting this, okay? If it too hurts too much, it is okay to tap for pressure. Never forget that, yeah? So now, what do we learn more about this? Why is it so interesting, the, the, the back hold, because you take the 
a bit the spaziness out of it, and <laughs> what do I want to do, what do I want to do? No, you're forced to stay here. Is it good or bad? Well, it depends. And if I learned from this truly, that any, you can make any position work, okay? Even the bad side. Okay? It just depends on the angle, what you're going to do. Now, we're going to take this a step further. What I started doing in my gym right now, especially with the kids and ladies, with the, big, with, the, with the adults, and now even with my advanced guys, is fixed hold grab So the, the other side of the world teaches is the colon elbow. Okay? But in the gym, what I with the kids' class especially, is they never stick to anything. They go like, oh, this, this. You can never teach anything because they keep switching around. So what I did to fix the guard was to do this. Now we're going to use our vest. Or not. There is different ways to do. Okay? Um, can I use you, please? And this is what I do with the kids now almost all the time. Okay. You, you take, so you know what is a colon elbow wrestling? Is it stand up, please? So every single class with the kids, I force them to do the back hold wrestling. Every single class. And I start to add later also stuff like that. For example, you're here. Okay. And after you get a bit better in this, for example, you start to say, okay, if you get double under and they have two strong sides, you can do a takedown like that. And you can, you can have those. Then for, after that, because this complete upper body contact, which is, which is easier to get, then Ruin also told us to be like, get the elbow, you get the collar. In the collar and elbow resting, I find it super hard. I find it easy to stall, almost impossible to throw the guy who puts his butt backwards. Basic judo, right? But you're forced to do this. So what I do with the kids, for example, I tell them, lift your foot up. Hook our foot feet inside each other, and we're going to try to throw each other from here. You teach the same skills. But a bit harder, and you get failure and success. That's what I told in my my. Uh, uh, this is no, not enough failure this year, or unclear failures. Here you have straight failure, and the same thing is going to happen later. Okay. So here you can almost not throw in judo. It's very hard. Yeah. But if you put, if you play the game in judo, you get thrown. So in jiu-jitsu, we don't have to play that game. Now, what I start doing to fix the guard. Put yourself in four, please. We we force people to keep this hold. Both feet on my hips. Okay. I have to pass your guard. You can do whatever you like. Don't kill me because I'm going to make some mistakes. You're not allowed to let go of your grips. You let go of your grips, you lose. Ready? That's fine. Use my mistakes. Pick me up. Nope, don't push me away. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah, we went. Huh. Easy, right? There you go. Make sure your, your uh, kids can do, or, or well, they don't teach kids maybe, but hold on. Make sure the people you do this with can do the front roll. Because that face plant is dangerous. Yeah. Now, let's go again. I made a mistake. True failure. Oh, I fly over. Now I'm going to put myself backwards. Oh, oh. Well, again, weight on my heels. Ah, so that's not good. So after to trial and error, you know this. Wait for a second. It's going to be this. And now I'm fair fight. I'm going to go fight. Go. It's almost impossible to pass your guard. It's going to be almost impossible to sweep me. I fall here. Okay. Usually people, what they do when they fall, yeah, they look like this. Sweep me. And look to the ceiling. That's the end position. So, what can you learn from this? Sweep me now, please. Sweep me. It's impossible to sweep me if I look to the opposite side. Got that? You try to keep your hip in the middle. Escape hip to the side. And I will pass your guard. I will squash you at least. Just so you learn to keep your hip in the middle. When I pass, you follow. Or, relax, if I get all the way over here, I stop. Now I can reset. So you learn all the skills that are able to guard. Go for this place. Let's go. So it's like, you can always imagine a million different symmetrical holds from simple every position, and you start playing from there with your, with your partner. You figure things out to try and learn in a quick way. Who here in the gym now, right now plays with leg locks? Who here plays with leg locks already? Okay, look. So for me, as far as I understand, the best position that I've found to explore leg locks is a 50-50. It is not the best position to be in, but it's a 50-50. But why is it so interesting? Look, very often when you have a position like, for example, the, the everybody know the 411? Come here, please. There you go. Come here. So, so what is the value in this 50-50 hold? Sit down, please. So this is the 411. Or honey roll, or whatever you call it, this one. See, here I have a clear positional and structural advantage, well, structural not necessarily, but a clear positional advantage over you, yes? And if you never explored this position yet, then your first inclination is to get the hell out of it, because you're, it's a bad position, you have to get out of it. 50-50, both people agree it's 50-50, yes? And in that case, you can both agree to play that game. 
And that's when I finally begin to attempt to run less away from the position if you put it on 50-50. Because it's an equal game. Yeah? I can stand losing a losing position. But I cannot stand losing over and over again an equal game. You know, because then it's really your fault <laughs> if you're a position or roll. Now, what else is there? This you can use. So for example, how can how did I so the, the true thing that I learned from this whole backward wrestling is there is much value to be had in forcing fixed hold fights. Okay? So for example, if I start if you did a position like you just did, for example, here, and you get my hold, okay, and I get and I get swept over there and I post my hand. I just save myself. And I create a problem that you have to solve. But what was my initial failure? What was my initial failure was to be off balance. So if I'm playing well, I should not need my hand to be put there. Yes? And every time I let go of a grip to post, see? So now you can use your hand to get up, for example. Yeah, you can use your hand for something else. Okay? And I lost one hand. So, I also learned to do things like you throw me, put on the sweep, okay, boom, post my elbow on the floor. And try to stay into this game. Now, don't move, okay? Don't move. I'm trying to pass your guard here. Don't move, don't move, don't move. I will recover your guard. And I'm, wait for a second. I promise you right now, that the act of you recovering your guard will get your guard passed. Recover your guard. I told you, right? And why is that? Because a guard pass is off the way down and back, please. So, because neither of them, the people that I know, hip escape from. What is hip escape? Why is hip escape from? Because very slowly, okay? You want to pass, okay, e even if I, I don't really care about the guard pass, put your knee here. In my, in my hip. Don't move up. Is this a good position for you here? No. Well, it's, st it's still a guard, technically, but I'm going to pass your guard here. Because you were flattened out. That's the first mission I have when, when, when trying to pass someone's guard is to flatten him out. Now, the moment, the moment you try to put your hip inside, look what happens. Put your hip in, you put yourself with your shoulders on the floor. So you did that to yourself. So the way to, pass, to recover your guard here is to put your nose on the floor. Shoulder inside, see? Freeze. Switch your both feet. Yeah? And now, from here, you're gonna walk away and go full belly down. Commit to symmetrical. Walk, 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 boom. And now from here, what you can do? Well, whatever you like. You can stand up. We can start finding stand up. Or, I want to stand up. I want to stop it from finding stand up. Apple guard. Now I fall into your guard. You understand? And we can take all the shit we show, look, we can take the initial, we can, we don't cover mistake. Okay, this is a very big mistake that forces your hand to the floor in this case. If you don't have the option, then your the only option you have is balance. Another simple, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give simple, simple other examples of games that I play, eh? So when I play this with the kids, what I noticed was, they often sweep someone over, but they let go of the grips. Ah, so you fly over, let go of the grips, all the sweep was for nothing. I told them, do not let go of the grip, what they do, they keep letting go of the grips. So what do we do? We play the game. Don't move. Okay. Put your feet on the floor. Get my collar and elbow. So I told the class what I learned from backhold wrestling is actually what I learned from Ruler then in general. I just put more time into the backhold wrestling for myself. So it is, don't move, okay? Start from here. Collar, elbow. If you like Nogi, shin and elbow, uh, head and head. Double color, I couldn't care less, take whatever grip you like, see, but make it symmetrical grip. You wanna be, you wanna fight for either mount, pass, or top position. Ready? Three, two, one, fight, go. Ha! <laughs> nice, right? I, I really love it, I really love this, like, with the, I don't know how far to take this, but the kids was magic. It's like, it's like I, I've been suffering teaching kids for years, eh? and I love, it, I love it. I actually love teaching kids these days. It's never been easier. I'm gonna make this so close. It drives me literally nuts. Because every, I say it every single day in the gym, and I refuse to do it. And I still don't have a final way to make it work. Look. So for example, we close guard, okay? Relax, please. Arm on the floor, here. And I'm gonna do a spinning arm bar. Okay, look. I'm gonna do first the way that most people do it. So go here, and I keep, so I'm gonna be here, okay? Keep uh, tight, please. No, no, no. Tight is in the moment. Don't move, just be strong. Tight. Now walk into a circle over here. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I get flattened out. 
because of my head. See? Now feel the difference. Here, if I up, now I try to fight. Go. See, if I put my nose into the floor, see, why is it so strong? Literature is about options. Yes. If you so the, one of the biggest options is rotation left and right. The moment you put your head on the floor like this, see, well, you can still rotate. Yeah. <laughs> but it's less fun. Lay, lay, here, please. Lay, lay on the on the back. Like one of the th things I always want to kill is the rotation of the head. If I block your head here, well, now you have pile of leaves lesions, go there, rotate. And I know that. And the not so strong in a shoes person, like the the pushover. The one who does not stand this ground, he will always choose the easy way out. He will roll away. But I got the back. If but the like the more resilient person will rotate back into me. And that's suffering, right? So you have to suffer, so you can, but this brings us to the jitsu. You can suffer now, suffer, suffer, and maybe suffer less later. Huh? Or you can run away from the suffering and suffer more in the end, but you will suffer. Okay? <laughs> yeah? Sorry? Yeah. But if I'm too eager, whoop, rotate, I go with him. So I have to be in the moment, mindful, you know, here in the moment, he squash his face, and he goes. If you want to really make him suffer, you block both sides. Now, there is no correct side. And you make him suffer so much, see, that he taps, see? Or, <coughs> but it is allowed, huh? it's, it's allowed, huh? it's fine. But you fix this by putting your nose into the floor. Nose on the floor, switch your legs. Well, what position is this? Uh, they all got a name now, yeah, cool, yeah. But uh, it's cool. Huh? But the problem with names is you got to name everything. Okay, so. When I started teaching, I used to call this inside to outside and inside shoulder escape. And I said, that's how a baby rotates. Okay? And it became baby bridge. And then, okay, now I've got a name, so I have to go with those names. But the problem becomes this. It's not a problem to do that, but this is jab. This is a cross, this is an uppercut. And I was teaching a boxing class. Jab, cross, uppercut. And then I teach jab cross uppercut, and my guy goes, Well, no, man, you have to be, you know, okay, give an uppercut after a cross because it's too far. <laughs> because you can also do this to a far thing. That is not an uppercut, that's a far underneath jab. Who fucking cares? <laughs> Who cares? Huh? Who cares? It's, it's a punch, and I can do this. Or you can throw a short cross and go in. Same thing. So if this is a baby bridge, beautiful, how you call this? How would you call this? Huh? <laughs> we can call it an upright baby bridge. Cool, upright baby bridge, great. But then, okay, how would we call this? Well, it's... Uh, well, see, see what the problem is? <laughs> the problem is always this. It's a spectrum. It's an extreme with an unlimited things in between. And the moment you, you want to name one thing, you have to know everything because people start to only see that. Huh? So, ultimately, like, uh, ever read the book of Bruce Lee? The Tao of Jeet Kune Do. Ever heard of Bruce Lee, right? What did he say? Don't do styles because it puts you into a hole. Well, there's nothing wrong about exploring a style, but it's wrong about seeing it as an absolute truth. And if you take it to the complete end, it's wrong to name things and only think it's that thing. You understand it? Is that what I'm saying here with this? Okay, so cool. So now what I want you to do is to do when you're playing this game is to focus on getting your nose on the floor. Yeah? The moment if you roll it, you keep your head here, it will not work. The same as with the sweep before. If you start to fall and look to the ceiling, well, this is the end position. You will look to the ceiling, so learn to look to the other side. But don't do it so with your squash. You don't have to stick to 50-50 holds for there. After a while, the kids, when they got like the the idea of it, then I start saying, right, did you hear the problem with me? Oh, you did that. I think it's like playing a guard. <laughs> so, and you can start saying, okay, look, now we allow this. You get my power, I get, no, no, don't go touch it. You get my color, I get your color, because you're going to see most of the time in Jiu-Jitsu, you have one dominant grip and one less dominant grip. If you do ever anyone with mountain climbing, I can assure you of one thing. When you're hanging on tightly, I climb both in, relax, I climb both in nature and on, on walls, right? Like, practice. And I can assure you of one thing. You rarely have ever let go of both at the same time. Unless there's only one option left, then you do that. But you never let go of one hand more than at the same time. So if you think about every single hand you let go, see it like this, when you're passing someone's guard, you're fighting, you're hanging on that ledge. Okay, so I'm here. So how do you make people, like, like, uh, how do you call the word? 
known about that, okay, we fight with one grip. It's fine to go. You can use your head to slap my head if you want to play self defense. You can do strip my grip, you get to my leg, see, if you're good, see, and I can usually move your leg away. See, and now we see the limits of every grip, try to remove it with the tools we have left. I go here and the foot came back. So while solving one problem, I create another. See? And now, <laughs> interesting fight, yes? And like, like, in all reason, in theory, I'm a black belt and I should pass the blue belt guard, pass the guard easily in theory. But it's not the case, it's not more of an equal fight. And then maybe next time we say, okay, we hold this here, and you hold whatever you like, and let's play. Good, see? And that's how, I, that's, that's how you can play this game. Now, interestingly, the, on, on the same time I discovered this, this way of training, I saw a group of Lego and Giles, and what did they do? Stand up, please. Now, sit on uh, your knees, on your knees. They were playing this game. I completely random, I saw them on Facebook, get my back, they're fighting with my back. They were fighting from here. What is this? It's a 50 50 position. And they can allow with grip breaks, you would put more than with grip, with grip, with like, with your hands on the floor, maybe. Start from here, you put one first on the floor. But like, more or less symmetrical fixed hold positions. And they lead to, to, uh, the many fun, fun things. Whatever I also did, but you your butt. I get you in guilty, you get me in guilty. <laughs> and you immediately start to realize the value of a certain grip. See? Because my grip cancels yours and your cancels mine. And, and that's basically it. You start to play from there. And then say, okay, maybe let go of one grip, maybe let go of two grips. And all of a sudden you start to see more things, fun things happen. Okay? Any questions about anything, about this? Who is going to ask me any question whatsoever? Now is the time. Nothing? Okay. That's either a very good explanation, most boring class ever, or, or it's bad. That's also possible. It was, it was good explanation. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Can you say that louder, please, for the camera? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we all can. We all can. Ah, thank you very much. Great.